Hey Savvy Devs, it's Savvy Nick here, and as you can see, we've made a little change to the channel. We're now calling the channel Savvy Devs. we got a lot of exciting things coming to the channel here in the next few weeks, and we'll be trying to bring content to you more frequently. And we have also started making the transition to the new name on other social media platforms. So in today's video, we're going to be going through and reviewing and using VirtualBox. VirtualBox is an open source software for virtualization of machines. Simply put, you can emulate a computer inside of another computer, sort of like Inception, a dream inside of another dream. That's just kind of funny to think about it that way. But VirtualBox is developed by Oracle, and thanks to them, we have a very powerful and free virtualization software. As you see here in front of us, this is what it looks like once you have it installed. And this virtualization software is suitable for most computers. Virtualization just refers to a process where you can create a virtual machine, as you can see here on the left side. I got about four of them here. We'll make a new one today. I want to say thanks to each and every subscriber, and I hope that you're enjoying the content that we've been making. We'll also be expanding our topics to more subjects, such as programming on Linux, engineering, and tech on Linux as well. And of course, we'll remain with the install and review tutorials. Once we get the rest in order, I'll do a separate video covering some of the new additions to the channel and the changes that we've made. For now, we'll go ahead and continue on the virtual box subject here. So as I mentioned before, we have virtual box here in front of us. What you can see here is a, just a few options on the top where it gives you some subcategories, such as taking a snapshot, going through properties of a virtual machine that's selected, cloning a virtual machine, settings, and starting up a virtual machine. But in order to take advantage of any of these, we'd have to create a virtual machine. So virtualization just refers to a process where you can create a virtual machine in an emulated environment, such as VirtualBox, which is this tool that we're using. And a virtual machine is just a platform that runs an emulated computer with hardware and resources that are available alongside your main computer in a virtual environment. I know that can sound confusing, but all you really need to know is that you can create virtual computers in already existing computers and they just share resources. So let's go ahead and create one. What we'll do is we'll go to the tools here. And once you click on the tools, it gives you a couple other options here at the top of VirtualBox. It gives you the preferences of VirtualBox to import or export a virtual machine, as well as creating a new one or adding one in. So what I'll do today is create a brand new virtual machine. Again, as you see on the left side, I've created multiple ones before, and we might even launch one here later, but let's create a new one, which is a very simple process as well. So I'm going to be creating an Ubuntu one, so I'm going to name it Ubuntu. One little neat trick that you see here, as you're typing in Ubuntu, the type changed down here, and it filled in a version that it selected for you. Most platforms nowadays run on 64-bit architecture, so that's why it selected a 64-bit. Let's call this Ubuntu VBox here, since we're using VBox. And you can see the machine folder is the default folder, which is on my computer, user Savinik virtual box VMs. After we've named our virtual machine, we're going to just hit continue. Next, you select how much RAM you want to allocate for the virtual machine from your already existing RAM on your computer. So I have 16 gigs available on this computer. I'm going to give my virtual machine four gigs, so 4096 here. Megabytes is equivalent to four gigabytes of RAM. Next, after I've selected a memory size, I suggest doing four or more gigs for most platforms, including most Linux distributions. Go ahead and hit continue. And now you're asked about the virtual hard disk. So this is really the storage space for the platform that you're installing. I'm going to be installing Ubuntu again. So um, I'm going to create a virtual hard disk now. You also have a few more options. Let's say if you have one that already exists, you can use an existing hard disk file. But since we don't, we're creating a brand new one. We're going to create a virtual hard disk now and hit the create button. We have a few different formats for our file type on the hard disk. You have VDI, VHD, VMDK, and since the VDI file is native to the virtual box, I'm just going to go ahead, select, and use that one. It doesn't really matter which one you use. 
It might make it easier to transfer between different types of virtualization softwares, but for me, VDI is perfectly fine. Following that, we're asked about how we want to manage the storage on our physical hard disk that we're creating. Well, it says physical hard disk, but it really means the virtual hard disk that we're creating. We have two options here. We have a fixed size, which is what the name sounds like. It's a fixed amount of space that you cannot expand. Whereas you have dynamically allocated, and I'll say that 99% of the time, you'll just want to go with a dynamically allocated one. That way, if you change your mind and need to resize the virtual hard disk, it's easy to do. Go ahead and select the dynamically allocated. And here's where you specify how much space to initially give the virtual disk. So I suggest using 32 gigs of storage space because I've ran into issues installing Linux distributions in the past with less space. And it's not so easy to figure out what's going wrong. So just uh, as a general rule of thumb for Linux distributions, I go to uh, right around 32 gigs here. Uh, I'm not going to put exactly, well, you can put exactly 32 gigs on this side. So let's just do that. As you can see, 32. All right. It's messing with me here. There we go. I finally got 32 in there. So we can go ahead and hit the create button. And at this point, we have actually created our new virtual machine. As you can see here, it's been added to the list. It says it's powered off. Another neat thing about VirtualBox is that it's available for almost every platform, including Mac OS X, Windows, and Linux. It really doesn't matter what system you are using because the layout of VirtualBox doesn't really change. So you'll be familiar on, so it will seem familiar on any type of a host platform, including the three that I mentioned before and works great on any of them. The software is available at virtualbox.org where you can learn even more about VirtualBox, but I'll make sure to put a link in the description below for you so you can check it out. And also you can emulate any platform really using VirtualBox. So that means you can install Linux, Windows, or Mac OS X if you really wanted to as a virtual machine. I like to mainly use Linux for my installs and I would definitely make the suggestion for anyone who wants to try out Linux to try it out on VirtualBox before devoting a physical computer to it. It just makes things very easy. As you can tell here, I I've, I've, have quite a few of them. So let me continue on here. Now this machine powered off alone here doesn't really do anything. So the first thing that we'd like to do is check out some of the settings that it has. And that's available by selecting any of the virtual machines that you've created or new ones. So we created this Ubuntu VBox virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And then we have a few options here up at the top that we listed before, but now we're able to use them. So a uh, really important one here is settings. If you go into settings, you'll get all of the information that you just set up repeated back to you. So the name here is Ubuntu VBox. The type is a Linux and the version is Ubuntu 64 bit. So one thing I didn't mention is you can change the type of system that you're trying to install. As you can see here, there's quite a few options and some of the ones that I've named before were the Windows option, Linux option, and Mac OS X option. There are different platforms available as well if you want to install something else. And then in the version, you actually have many different types of distributions that you can install and generic kernels that you can install. So you can see here the 2.6 or a 3X kernel or a 4X kernel, that's 64 bit, you would select this option if it's not in the list. I highly suggest I highly suggest going and using one of the named distributions as it will work uh, better out the box and that's why I've really chosen Ubuntu today. But it's also available to emulate most other distributions since a lot are based off of Ubuntu or Debian and those run fine here. As another general rule of thumb, I like to be able to select Ubuntu 64-bit if it's a 64-bit based Ubuntu distribution. If you're not sure what it's based off of, I just suggest using the other Linux, either the 32-bit architecture or 64-bit is probably what you'd use mostly nowadays. Ubuntu 64 is fine for me, so I'm gonna keep it there. We have a few more options here. The advanced, you can share a clipboard if you want to. So if you copy something on the host machine, you can also paste it on the virtual machine side, as well as drag and drop between the two if you really wanted to. Description's really unnecessary. You can put in a description if you have a bunch 
of different virtual machines and you want to keep track of them. Disk encryption is an option you can use as well. You can encrypt your disk if you enable this, put in a new password, confirm that password, and then have to enter it in every time that you start the virtual machine. The system settings allows you to change the settings that we set up before and a few extra settings that might be nice to note. You have things such as the base memory, which we set up to be four gigs, what types of different devices that you would like to start on boot up. So you have the floppy disk emulator here, an optical disk emulator and a hard disk emulator. Uh, these are by default and I do suggest keeping them. The floppy you can probably remove, but it's not gonna hurt anything being there. The chipset here, we have different types of chipsets that you can use. I don't usually experiment with this, I just keep it the default. A pointing device if necessary, you can change this around if you have or want multi-touch enabled. And a few other options at the bottom, I don't like to change any of that. In the processors, sometimes using more than one processor, if available, is nice to have. As you can see, I have up to eight CPUs here available but I like to actually use two processors for uh, myself. And you can set an execution cap as well, so you can throttle the amount of CPU usage that can go to the virtual machine. Acceleration, we really won't run through, but display, you can set up video memory. So if something's graphically intensive on your virtual machine, you can go ahead and up this number in order to have better processing on your graphics. Uh, if you have more than one monitor, of course, uh, scalings here, enabling the 3D and 2D video acceleration, that might help. I don't usually mess with these. Sometimes I do uh, put up the video memory a little bit. It just makes uh, for better rendering. And then on the storage side of things, this, this is more important than uh, some of these other ones because in order to install our virtual machine, we're going to have to apply a image which will install Linux off of. So I already have an ISO on my computer. I went ahead and found it on Ubuntu's website and it's Ubuntu 19, I believe. Um, and it is the net installer. So what I can do is in this controller IDE interface, we have an empty disk. So I'll go ahead and load the disk here and choose a virtual optical disk file. So this is just an ISO file. Don't let that confuse you. Uh, so you can see in my downloads, I have this mini ISO. I'll go ahead and open that up. That's my Ubuntu installer disk. And again, this is important to know because this is how you install your platform. This is going to be the same method with whatever distribution or Windows or Mac OS X that you plan on installing on this virtual machine. So you make sure that you select it and then you can hit the OK button. But let's just go through a few more things here. We have audio, so you can enable or disable your audio as well as make a virtual sound card network nat allows you to just use the network that's currently connected to your computer and it's just completely shared so anything that uh, is currently set up let's say a wi-fi connection will be transferred to the virtual machine as well so it doesn't get a ip address it just shares the ip address that you have currently on your host computer there are different methods as well a bridge adapter if you want uh, separate networks completely. So your virtual machine will actually get a IP address assigned to it. I usually like just using the NAT format. That That's plenty for me. I'm not going to do anything special over there. But if you're setting up a server or something and you want to test that, bridge adapter might be a good choice. There's also other options that you can read through, but those are really the two that I use the most. Not attached isn't really helpful because that just means there's no network at all. And you can see there's multiple adapters that you can set up as well, up to four. Ports, if you have serial comms or USB that you want to share between the host and the virtual machine, you can do it here. Shared folders, you can add in different types of shared folders from the host to the virtual machine. And if you want to change up some of the user interface settings here in VirtualBox, you can do it through this last option. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Finally, real quick, since I did go ahead and put that ISO image in, I'm going to boot the uh, virtual machine now. And I'll just show you that uh, from here, you can pretty much have a fully emulated computer and install a platform on it. So uh, again, the Ubuntu VBox is what I was creating. So I'm gonna go ahead and power that one on at this point. 
So if I hit the start button, boom, we get a virtual computer here starting up and you can see that now we have the Ubuntu installer up in front of us here. Um, there are quite a few options here at the bottom right. And if you click on these icons, you get different types of options. So you can see if I click on the ISO image, I have different types of options available to me. I can choose a different disk if I wanted to, but we don't want to do that since we're currently mounted on the mini ISO, which is this image here that uh, it's the installer for Ubuntu. One thing I like to do, and most of your options are actually available here up at the top, at least in the Mac OS X version, uh, all these options are also available in the Windows version as well as the Linux version, but make sure to um, increase the size here because it's really hard to see this virtual machine right now. So if we go to view and the virtual screen, we can change the size and scale it. So now it's a little easier to see my virtual machine. There's different types of setups as well that you can go through. So let's, let's go through a couple of these options up here at the top. Uh, in the machines, you can take a snapshot, and all a snapshot is is a current capture of uh, what is currently installed on the computer. Every, everything is recorded by a snapshot, so you can basically create many snapshots and then go in between them for um, different places where you were at with your virtual machine. So let's say before you installed some kind of software, you created a snapshot. Well, if you go back to the snapshot that you made, now everything's reverted back before you actually put that software on the virtual machine. It's a great little thing to have and it's a good way to make backups of your system that's currently running. You can also of course clone your virtual machine but that takes a lot more effort and a lot more space. A few other options here is to shut down the machine, reset it, pause it if you want. Uh, in the view we can record the virtual machine that we're working with. You saw the virtual screen size that we can change. There's just a couple other options here with the menu and status bar. And there's a couple different modes. You can run the scaled mode, the seamless mode, and the full screen mode. I actually like running the full screen mode the most, um, but not in here, at least until we have the guest edition CD installed, which is just some extra tools in order for you to emulate your platform a little better. I suggest always installing this after you have your platform installed in VirtualBox. Uh, a few more things. The input allows you to change keyboards around and you also have the devices which is um, emulated devices. Optical drives, the audio card, the network card, USBs, shared folders, uh, shared clipboard as we talked about before. You can also enable it, disable it in here quick access. And then, of course, when you install that platform, you can insert the guest edition CD after you've removed the media that's currently located in the disk drive. Window allows you just to minimize and look at what you're currently running and help, of course, send you to the VirtualBox website. It's a great uh, resource to use. You can also search for different types of help inside the contents here. Well, at this point, I believe you do have enough knowledge to go ahead and use VirtualBox. And if you want to install some kind of a Linux distribution here on VirtualBox, you can reference one of the many videos that we have on our channel with many different types of distributions that we've installed in the past. They're very easy to follow. So I highly suggest checking those out. I hope you enjoyed this review and walkthrough of VirtualBox. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.